So today is a Monday night. It's currently almost 7 p.m. It's just going to be one of my daily practice sessions. I'm really tired today because <laughs> I had a really long day with uni classes and yesterday I had a really heavy shoulder workout. I really don't feel like practicing but I have a graduation recital coming up in a couple months. I haven't fully memorized my rep yet. The biggest problem I have right now is my Rachmaninoff piano sonata this bad boy it's just like so many notes that i'm having trouble memorizing it also i have a lesson tomorrow that's why i have to practice tonight not only is this repertoire going to be important for my graduation this semester as well but i'm planning to use this rep for auditioning for masters programs overseas so i really need to get this refined and it would be ideal to have it memorized by now which is two months away from my like recital concert so i'm a bit behind let's do some work the Rachmaninoff sonata I'm going to be playing is sonata number two. Some of you may know that there are two different versions of this. The first version was written in 1913, but he revised it because he thought it was too hard. The revised version is the one I'm playing, and he revised it in 1931. Some people might argue that it's less interesting. From my case, as the pianist, the original version is just way too hard, it's way too difficult to play. Just so that I can get a more refined piece and more refined sonata, I chose the revised version. I'm essentially picking quality over quantity because I know if I pick the original version, I probably won't be able to play it that well. And of course, we're going to be playing it pretty slowly just because it's still practice tempo. Also, one other thing is I honestly think warming up is slightly overrated, so I don't really warm up. <laughs> As one of my teachers said, just warm up by playing. So let's get straight into it. With all of these sections here, It's actually really difficult in the left hand because I want to bring out that thumb. And the challenge with Rachmaninoff is always that you need to be careful of how thick you get in terms of texture. He likes to write a lot of different notes and you always have to try and prioritize what you want to voice out of it, which means what you want to make heard. It would be really nice to get my left hand thumb to be brought out. But it's really tricky. So let's, let's work a little bit on that. By the way, the first opening theme per se in the left hand, this is actually the Fabian Fabonacci. Fabiani? Fabin t -t -t Today, Junior! Fabonacci sequence. <laughs> Fabonacci sequence is when you add the previous two numbers. Yeah, it's like a pattern where you get zero plus one equals one, and then one plus one equals two, and then one plus two equals three, and then two plus three equals five. And he's essentially doing that with notes. Semitone, semitone, two semitones, three semitones, five semitones. And yeah, and he basically builds this whole sonata based around this sequence.
same thing here, I want to voice my left hand thumb, which is very, very tricky because we have, we go from forte right down to piano in a very short time. Yeah, that's, that's not happening at full speed. Also, pedaling is really tricky as well because you need to make sure that it supports the texture without smudging all the harmonies. That's why the voicing is so important. says poco meno mosso if you can't hear two distinct uh voice lines then i'm probably not doing a good job as a performer there's this one in the right hand and in the left hand we have I guess the tricky part about this is that the left hand, the middle voice here, it's not just a matter of doing this. I'm actually switching in between my thumbs. So if you have a look very closely. again and try to listen for the two distinct melody lines. score but on the third line of page number five i wrote in with pencil chromatic and what that basically means is the voicing i want to let heard in that specific bar i need this because that's the the first theme um we hear this but my right hand is playing so I need to let my right hand not get in the way of this and also my left hand is playing chords so I need to make my thumb come out. So I'll show you what I mean. My left hand is playing Basically, I, I want to make this line heard and with the fingering, I'll have to do, I'll have to bring up my thumb, second finger, out of these three, notes, I need to make the E heard and then the, the second finger again. Yeah, that is like super difficult.
practice that part. <sighs> Now, when you're practicing, it's so important to realize that you shouldn't crumble under the pressure of having to always play because like playing is not practicing, right? I'll try and practice this at a practice tempo and then let you guys hear what it would sound like, which doesn't necessarily mean it has to be boring, right? We try that slightly faster now. So clearly I shouldn't be playing it any faster than what I've just practiced because I still don't know the notes. Um, so now let's try practicing this in groups. So I still can't get it uh, correct. So this time I'm going to try and pause before every group and then think about all the notes I have to play before I play them. So it sounds something like this. Take as much time as you need. So that one, that time it was so much better because I think I only missed like two notes. So whenever I have a section that I'm really, really stuck on, I try to approach it with like all of the different practice methods that I know in my head until something works. And just then I think the pausing before every group that worked. So I'll keep working on that. The two bars before this as well is also too very hard because I want to bring out this voice. And that is like super difficult because <laughs> right hand is playing. And all of this needs to be really legato.
I think my left hand can be heard um, a little bit more clearer there. Again, voicing here with my left hand thumb. I think my right hand is too loud. Let's try that all again from the Meno Mozzo part. This is like the second subject because all of this is in 12-8. I think it's really important to count. If you're not counting in your practice sessions, you can't really expect it to be in time during your performance as well. So every single time I play this, I count in my head very, very clearly. So I'll try to count out loud for this time. That's too hard trying to count out loud, but you get the idea. remember that's method 40.
last three pages, basically the ending of the first movement. So I was going to finish recording this video, but my friends just came in and then asked if I want to go IGA with them, like the convenience store. So let's go. Oh, it's Do you want to say hi? No. no? <laughs> <laughs> I like this one better. Really? But Alex. But I like. Yeah, I like this one. Huh? Oh, that's the same as. Wow, so pretty. Oh shit! Sorry. <laughs> I hope no one took my stuff. Not to turn this into like a vlog. I mean, I guess it's a practice vlog. I got um, I got coconut water and some chocolate protein shake for my workout I did yesterday. Okay, so let me try and finish the last three pages of the sonata. Anyway, of course, I can't record my whole practice. Like, this has just been an hour since I started. The whole thing I just played is not going to be up to standard for what an audience is going to hear. And also, don't get me wrong, like, this is not usually how I practice. I try to rush forward just for the sake of this video. I usually practice every bar and every phrase and every page again and again. Typically, my practice sessions go for about like 
four to six hours, like minimum three hours. I wouldn't actually do more than six hours of practice each day because I was actually just talking about this with my friend I just went to the convenience store with. But my practice tends to be, I just sit down and I don't get up until I finish practicing. So usually I'll be, as insane as this sounds, I would sit down and probably not take my ass off the chair for about six hours unless I had to go to the toilet or unless I had to like go get a drink because I just want to get my practice over and done with. If I practice more than six hours, usually I can't practice the next day. So maybe I need to work on my efficiency in terms of how I practice because maybe six hours straight is not the way to go. Like especially right now, it's my last semester. Like I'm graduating my honors, which is my fourth year of bachelor's degree which is going to be in August. I have so many different things going on. Yes, I should prioritize practicing, but I do need to get other stuff done. So maybe that's why I tend to just sit down and want to get it over and done with. I don't know, if there's better ways to practice, let me know in the comments. Yes, I've tried like three hours in the morning and three hours at night, or like two hours, two hours and two hours, like throughout the day. I think a part of the reason why I need to sit down and get it over and done with is the way I focus when I practice. I find it really difficult to sit down, if that makes sense. Like they say taking that first step is always the hardest point and I find that that's the case for me every day. So actually getting to the point of sitting down and getting focused, I have trouble with. So maybe once I sit down and get focused, I don't want to leave because I'm scared that I'm just going to procrastinate again. And one of the key reasons I like going to the gym is because I think fitness and staying healthy is a very key factor in pursuing piano. Like I already said, you do have to practice like hours and hours every day. And I think it's just not possible if you're not fit enough to do it. I mean, some people are definitely going to disagree with this, but it's just helpful for me, if that makes sense. I'm still trying to find content that's suitable to YouTube and suitable for me as a pianist. I hope this was a good video to watch. I'm sorry that I got so many notes wrong. I know like most people aren't used to hearing that many wrong notes, which is a part of the reason why I'm making these sort of vlogs is I want to share what kind of process and what kind of preparation goes in to doing like a few minutes of concert. Because if you think about it, my repertoire is going to be 40 minutes, but I'm going to be putting in like five months of practice into this 40 minutes, you know? So I really think it's such a waste that I put five months of effort into the 40 minutes and it's over after like a couple concerts. So please share your support by liking this video and actually you're already showing support by watching this video in the first place. But if you want more of this practice vlogs, please consider subscribing. So this was just like a small practice vlog I'm trying out right now. Let me know if you like this sort of content. So leave a like and subscribe and that will show your support. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. See ya. <laughs>